Hey everybody, Pastor Sam here, and we are on part nine of our short video recap series on the gospel according to Matthew called King Jesus. In this episode, we're looking at Matthew chapter four, verses 18 through 25, and we're going to talk about the king's call to follow him. Now here we see in verse 18, Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he sees two brothers, Simon, who's also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And Jesus called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed Jesus. Notice right off the bat here, according to Acts 4.13, Peter and John were common, uneducated men. They were ordinary people, blue-collar fishermen. They worked out in the heat, in the sun. They were probably waterlogged, at least their feet were. They smelt like fish from all the fish they caught and the fish they had to clean. And if you've been fishing, you know what that smell is like. But yet Jesus walked up to them, ordinary, common people, and he said, Come, follow me. What did they do? They left everything behind, their nets, their father, their boats, their fishing equipment, and they obeyed and followed King Jesus. Now, what is the application of that to our lives? Well, I think it's simply this. Jesus is calling all of us to trust and follow him. And in order to follow Jesus, that means you and I must leave certain things behind. That's repentance. We must turn away from following ourselves and our feelings and our agenda and our will and our plans and our goals. Those all have to be carried out to sea. They all have to be left behind. And we have to turn from those things and turn to King Jesus and believe and trust in him and show that we really believe and love him and trust in him by following him. Well, how do we follow King Jesus today? Because back then he was physically walking by the Sea of Galilee. Well, we follow King Jesus by following the Holy Spirit of God, whom Jesus has sent. And the way we follow the Holy Spirit and walk in line with the Holy Spirit is by following the Holy Spirit's words that have been revealed, preserved, and documented for us in the 66 books of the Holy Bible. 2 Peter chapter 1, 19-21. All these scriptures were not invented or made up by men, but men were carried along by God the Holy Spirit, and they wrote down the exact thoughts, message, and words that God wanted to be written down for us. So that's how we follow Jesus today, by following his word and his commandments and his teachings in the Holy Bible. But like I said, if we do that, that must mean that we leave certain things behind. And we have to let Jesus be the Lord, Master, and Captain of the ship of our lives. Okay? Now they did that. But notice he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. One of the reasons that Jesus has saved us and called us to follow him is not just to love him and walk with him and enjoy him forever. Yes and amen. But it's also for Jesus to work in and through us by the power of his Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, to be fishers of men and for God to use us to catch men for Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons why God's left us on this earth. It is to love other people to share his real love, proclaim his real truth, so they can have real life with the real God both now and forevermore. Now, the question then becomes, how can we be effective fishers of men? Because, quite frankly, it is nerve-wracking and scary oftentimes to share the truth of Jesus and the gospel with lost loved ones, family members, friends, or co-workers. It can be hard. But that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit lives within us. That's why he is with us, to give us power to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But also you'll look at what Jesus did and what he taught Peter, Andrew, uh, James, and John to do. Notice in verse 23 of chapter 4, Jesus went throughout all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. If we're going to be fishers of men, that means we must strive out of love for God and love for others to share, proclaim, and explain the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are not going to get saved by just looking at our lives. 
They have to hear the message of the gospel. Romans chapter 10, they're never going to believe in a Jesus they don't hear about. And they can't believe in Jesus unless they hear about him, okay? And that's one of the reasons God has us here, is to go preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16, 15. <clears throat> but not only did Jesus do that, he was healing every disease and every affliction among the people. In other words, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus went about doing good. And that is another very important component of being an effective, an effective fisher of men and obeying the king's call. And, and in order to do that, we need to do good to other people. Be kind. Be friendly. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. Show love and respect and have concern about their welfare and look for ways to bless and do good to them for the glory of God. So may God help us to love and do good to others, share his truth, be fishers of men, and obey the call to follow Jesus and do his will.